So like obviously I need to wear this for the video, but uh it's right where the mic goes, so <laughs> Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to 3DIY. We're in the end game now. It's the culmination of a decade of Marvel Cinematic Movie history. And I've got to celebrate because you know me, I'm a huge nerd. I got to make a toy to celebrate a movie. That's what I do. And here's my toy right here. So today on the show, I'm going to be making Tony Stark's arc reactor slash nanotech nano bot house nano particle housing unit. There we go. Got it. Got there. That magnetically attaches to my chest just like this. And so that's what we're in for today. Stick around. As is the case with any replica, the first thing that we're going to need to do is get some references. Now, for something like this, I'd usually like to use a, something a little bit better than screen grabs from the movie, like, for example, a Hot Toys replica or something. But since this prop surprisingly doesn't have any such replica, I'm going to have to take movie screenshots. And that'll just consist of watching the movie for all of the parts where Tony's got his chest reactor easily exposed to the camera and then picking out the best frames from there. It seems to me as though three separate VFX teams were in charge of making Tony's chest piece effect in this movie. So you've got first scene where they're showing it off. That's clearly the best one. Then there's these shots where it's clearly a different effect. It distinctly looks a lot thicker and you can tell that the top portion just doesn't quite match. And then when it's time for the suit to come out, it just switches straight over to this effect. And that's just totally different. So I'll be using a combination of the first two references, as those are the most accurate and clear, with a strong preference for the first one, since that's clearly the glory shot. Next, I'll take the references into Photoshop and play around with them so that they're a little bit more useful to me. All right, now that we've got the reference, it's time to open up Blender. This is a more technical and geometric model, which actually tends to play more towards Fusion 360's wheelhouse. And honestly, I think I would have had an easier job making this prop if I had done it in Fusion. So learn from me. If you're working on something like this, Fusion 360, better way to go. The first thing I modeled was the front grill here in the little triangle place. So what I did for that is I just lined up my reference for one half and then I used the mirror tool and then just kind of trace that out until I've got the general shape of it and then make it about a millimeter thick. Then I want to create the housing around that area and that'll be the same thing, just tracing with the symmetry tool and then just adding a few details, making sure that that's making sure that it pops and then just adding as many details as I can, trying to make it as screen accurate as I can without totally losing my mind, which uh, I honestly came pretty close to on this project. And uh, it wasn't because of the front face. Let's tell you, let's say that the part that really drove me crazy trying to replicate was this top panel. Don't get me wrong. We get a pretty good look at it, but not as good a look at it as you would think. So like from this distance, yeah, that looks like we've got a whole bunch of detail. You can sort of take a guess, but I really want to get like fine, precise detail. And so when I zoom in to sort of, you know, see that it's just really pixelated. So the best thing that I can do for this sort of detail is to just kind of assume what I'm looking at and then take a look at other people's art of it and see what they've assumed that they were looking at and seeing if I can just kind of find a middle ground where I'm happy with the general accuracy and also just knowing when to give the f up and say that looks pretty close. You should stop now because the one thing that I find I have the biggest trouble with is when you're like zoomed way the f in and you're working on, you know, tiny details, it really exaggerates the differences. So like you can be way, way zoomed in and you'll think this doesn't look anything like the real prop. And then you zoom out and you're like, oh, that was like a millimeter different. It does not matter, at least in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I think that there is a time and a place for extremely accurate prop modeling. And when you're three days away from Endgame coming out, that's not the time. So we're gonna be pushing past a little bit. A lot of this modeling job was honestly just trial and error. For example, this corner piece that kind of folds over this edge, I made that and deleted it maybe four or five times just because I was not happy with how it turned out. I think part of it is the angle of the surface that I'm creating it on. So like I've got to kind of rotate it and get it into the right position. And it's really awkward to sort of work out the shape and also figure out the angle and perspective of the whole thing. Anyway, I don't even have any useful advice. I just tried a whole bunch 
until I made something I'm happy with. And now I've got it. And I really like how it turned out. Now the last area of detail I have to do is the bottom slash side pieces here, where we've got these kind of grill-esque details. I don't know how to describe that, but I do know how to make it. And the answer is wing it. And with that, I've got the modeling done. It's time for the 3D printing montage. Oh, wow, yeah! All right, now that we've got our 3D printed components done, it's time to work on the more DIY aspect of the build. Iron Man's chest piece glows, obviously. So I needed a nice, easy, quick way to wire it with LEDs and also to get a nice diffused acrylic panel on the front. With a quick trip to the dollar store, I found the perfect thing. Check this out. It's this glowing whiteboard speech bubble thing. So it's already got a white acrylic panel that diffuses the light. It's got LEDs. It's got a power switch and it's got a battery pack, which is guys. this is literally just another shape of the thing I'm making. This is this is a speech bubble shaped arc reactor already for fuck's sake. So all I'm going to need to do is trace the front panel shape out of the acrylic and then I'll need to cut that out somehow. Now, acrylic is pretty difficult to get through. Now, last time I tried cutting acrylic on the show, I was using entirely the wrong Dremel tools and it I mean, it worked, but it was a pain in the ass. So I went out to the store and I got myself a proper Dremel cutoff disc that's rated for cutting metal, so these aren't going to be breaking like those brittle pieces of crap I had before. Now all I need to do is cut out the correct shape of the front panel and glue that right in. Or it would be if I didn't accidentally wipe off an edge and cut off too much material. Oh, there's a big gap. Isn't that fun? Uh, I don't actually have enough of this acrylic left over to cut another one, so we're going to have to fucking work with this. I can use the grill piece that goes over this to hide a seam really effectively, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll just trace out this piece and really carefully line those up and glue that together. And yeah, you can't even tell. That's perfect. For a quick and dirty metallic finish, I like to use rub and buff. This is just on the border, I would say, of a prop the size of something I would entirely cover with rub and buff, because honestly, you know, there are probably better paints for this. But rub and buff is super easy. I didn't even need to prime it, really. And I'm just going to paint the rub and buff all over the place, and that's going to give me a nice metallic finish. Now, I'll just use a little hot glue to fix everything in place here, and we're ready to move on to the electronics. First step of adding the LEDs is going to be having something to house them. I intentionally left the backside open so that I could improvise whatever housing unit I used for the electronics. I'm going to be using foam floor mats. First thing I do is cut out a shape that'll fit into the backside of the chest piece. And then I take this circular Dremel bit and I hollow out a channel in the center for the LEDs. Now we just need to liberate these electronic components from their original housing. Thankfully, these LEDs are just stuck down with some weak glue and I can just pull those off. And I want to keep that battery compartment because that perfectly houses the batteries and I don't see myself coming up with a better solution. So. I'm just going to take the rotary tool again and just hack that right out. All right, now that I've got the electronics, I just need to fit them into this foam piece. So I cut a hole the same size as the battery pack in the back side of the foam and stick that in the LEDs through. Then I'll arrange the LEDs in a nice little circle or nice ish little circle. Honestly, after putting it together, I noticed that it's just a little bit lopsided in its glow. And to be honest, it bothers me a lot. Can't lie. But I'm working on being the kind of person who isn't bothered so much by that kind of thing. But it bothers me. Moving on. For the power switch, I cut a little section of foam just about the same size right beside this little dip in the corner of the model. And then I'll just kind of shimmy that on in there and then I'll fill it with another small piece of foam. And voila, power button. Next, I glue on some magnets to make the prop wearable. These three hexagon shapes on the top are a little bit darker, so I'll mix up a darker silver paint and I'll just paint those in. And then all that's left to do is to add some weathering. So I mix up some brown and black acrylic paint with some water and just kind of slather that all over the surface and wipe off the excess. I actually got a little bit of my weathering wash on the white acrylic and that left a bit of a stain that kind of freaked me out, but I was able to sand it off real careful like. And with that, Iron Man's arc reactor nanoparticle housing unit is complete. 
now all that's left to do is to show it off and go see Endgame. away from leaving the CN game. I am... I don't even know. I'm too hyped. Clearly I'm too hyped. Another successful 3 DIY build. I am so happy with how this one turned out, guys. Check this out. It's got this little magnet thing. Oh, and didn't show this off in the rest of the video, but the way it attaches is by this little plate in the back. It's got these magnets. They just attach like that. And it just kind of clings onto the shirt. It's super good. I, uh... Just shove that under the shirt and ta-da! and easy as pie. This probably speaks volumes to the power of enclosed cognition, but I just feel really cool right now. Like, I look like Iron Man. I am Iron Man. And now I've seen Endgame. So, there's that. That's probably even more important than the chest piece, really. I'm gonna keep this video spoiler free, but I do plan on making even more Infinity War based props in the near future. So stick around for those. If you have any suggestions, hit me up in the comments down below. I'd love to make some stuff that you guys want to see on the show. And before I go, I want to give a super special shout out to Get Tuda Chopra, who is my most recent and currently only patron supporter. If you guys want to join in with Get Tuda Chopra in supporting the show, you can do that in a couple of ways. First of all, you can join our Patreon which is really fun. You get to chat with me on the Discord server and have a say in what future episodes get made. Or two, you can go check out our merch store because we got that now. We got shirts, we got tank tops, we got stickers, we got everything. So check it out. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Stay creative, you nerds.